Well, with me, Rod Cox, who's come in on the Honda, an unscheduled pit stop. And, Rod, we've already seen um, Jeff Sale go out of the race with fuel problems because of freezing of petrol. And is that the problem that you've had? I think that's what's happening here. Uh, I didn't really want to... I didn't run a uh, freeze of fuel. I reckon we could have made it safely without putting bloody ice in it. But, uh, that's what they decided to do. And I don't think it's working because... At the moment, the bike's full of water. It just won't run down low. It's just picking up water out of the tank. So and that's totally thrown all your race plans out of schedule as well, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. We didn't even make an hour and 12. We're aiming for an hour and a half to three stops. Now it looks like we've got five. So just that's to keep circulating, I think, if we can put up with it. All right, Rod. Well, well, we'll keep an eye on you through the race. It looks like the race leaders are just about to come in for their first pit stop. Thanks, Willing now down into Castrol Corner. This is the lap that he's got to stop, or has indicated he will stop, and he'll make the one hour 12 minute mark. Foot dragging, indicating he's coming in. And here comes the race leader. The first of four scheduled pit stops. The tank already open, as you can see. Into the lead goes Rob Phillips with Michael Dowson right on him. We could have a Yamaha go into the lead. He is right on Rob Phillips at this stage. Then it's Wayne Gardner in third place. He's gone by. So, fourth place at the moment for bike number four. Going by also is Malcolm Campbell. Bike one, but he's a lap down. It's 16 and 11, the next two bikes on the track, which is the GPZ 900 Max Thompson, Paul Sattler, and the Suzuki 750 of... Neil Chivers and Robert Holden, Holden riding. Then it's bike number five, the second Maddich team bike of Pete Fires, Alan Blanco. Slow stop for the Maddich Pirelli team. 35.79 seconds. They practiced in 20 seconds yesterday. They've dropped 15 seconds in the pit. 35.79. There's the new race leader, Rob Phillips. And look at Michael Dowson on him. Brilliant riding from Dowson. Gee whiz, he's been producing some magic and he goes into the lead over Phillips. Well, this is just brilliant stuff from Dowson on a 500cc bike, two-stroke, 90 horsepower, and he has ridden his heart out. Did that at surface, but retired with leg cramps. Well, Len Willing got away to a flying start at the start of the cast trial, and he stuck to the lead all the way through, Len. That was a tremendous start for your team. Uh, I sort of, it was hard to know which way to go. Normally I like to stay with the leaders and then uh, try and race later on, but I think everybody's getting used to that plan, so I thought I'd better change it around. Well, what are the tactics from here? I mean, you've had uh, the best of all start. Just keep running. Yeah. Has, has, did uh, the tyre wear um, surprise you? Was it as good or better than what you expected? No, there's, um, there's quite a few compounds to choose from. Um, I choose one that was good for probably the first half of my session and then a little bit slippery from then on, where the ones that uh, other people would have cho chosen, which we have on our bike now, um, that sort of takes a little while to get going, but then it really starts working good. And that's sort of my break from Rob was because of the tyre that did that, a tyre decision. Um, but then as you can see, he was starting to get up. me back down again. You know? right. So the tyre that Frenchy's got on out there now, is that um, suited to his style of riding? Yeah, very, very much. We'll use that, probably we'll use that style tyre for the rest of the day, I think. I only chose the small one to try and get myself to the traffic or anybody else because I figured that was the best place to make some time. Right, if you're there at the end of the race and in the race lead, is there a chance you'll go for that compound again for the sprint at the end? Um, depending on the weather, if it keeps getting hotter like it is but doing, no. But uh, if, if it was to come over cloudy or even rainy, the, the softer one would be the best choice for sure. All right, then. Thanks very much and the best of luck for the rest of the race. And uh, we'll now look at uh, the other contenders in the lead as we prepare for other important pit stops in the Castrol 84. He's very slow into the pit. He's gone six minutes past the one hour, 12 minutes that he needed to do to get himself four pit stops in the Castrol six hour. And maybe by trying to pull out a little more distance, he's cost himself a lot of time. Here he comes to the pit and he stops now. Phyllis is still on the bike. Perro now, Ian Perro gets on the machine. in 
point three five seconds, but it doesn't start. Finally, it fires at twenty two and a half seconds. But it was interesting to note at that pit stop that they put a little bit of uh, fire extinguisher foam around the front of the bike, thereby cooling the machine. An interesting concept. Well, we've just got another little bit of uh, one of the difficulties of racing in the Castrol 6 hour. Robbie Phillips, who was in the race lead there for a while, couldn't see his pit forward. <laughs> Did you run out of fuel at the end, Rob? Oh, I think I might have. It wouldn't start just then. Um, I've got bad eyes. I should wear glasses while I ride. <laughs> um, I looked for the board, but they put the different board up, and I was still looking, couldn't see it. And then Ian just about leaned over the fence and grabbed me. So uh, that's how I stopped. Right, well you've had a, a fairly um, slow start to the race, didn't you? You were back in 6th or 7th position at race start and now you've worked your way back up to near the race lead. Is that the way you painted? I couldn't find the ignition switch button. You're in the wars, mate. What have you been up to for the last couple of weeks? Where's the button? Where's the button? I'm looking around and I couldn't see any. Where's the button? Then it went. Well, you did well to get back up into second spot and into the race lead there for a short while. What's going in the race lead? Yeah, Michael Dowson was um, dicing with you for the race lead briefly there for a moment. Oh, how's that, eh? Uh, see what happens. Uh, it's pretty hot and slippery out there. You didn't change the rear tyre. Didn't we? No. You sure? Yeah. Oh. But very quick if you did, I didn't see it. Yeah? It only takes about 19 seconds or something. I don't know, I didn't look. I don't, I don't think you did, mate, so yeah. how's that affect you? No, it doesn't affect me, it's got, to, it's got to worry about it, isn't it? <laughs> In the pits at 11.23, the Alan Blanco Pete Byers, the second of the Mattage team bikes, this time the VF1000R. Casual pit stops, it's the way to make sure that you make no mistakes. And off they go is Richard Scott, all togged up, waits for the race leader, Michael Dowson, to come in. That's John Pate, also waiting for Wayne Gardner. comes the race leader, bike seven, Michael Dowson, at 11.28, he hasn't made the hour 30 mark, so this could force the Yamahas out to four stops in the Castrol 6 hour, watches on him, Scott stands by to assist the fuel in, Dowson off the bike, Richard Scott goes on it. Practiced calm in the Toshiba Yamaha team. Twenty seconds gone by. Rear tire going on the bike. Slow stop. There's the time we're watching. Off it goes. That we lost it at just on 37.18 seconds. So a slow stop for Michael Dowson and Richard Scott, and Scott takes off in the Castrol 6 hour for his first stop. And into the lead went Wayne Gardner, followed by Robert Holden on number 11 in second place. laps covered in the Castrol 6 hour and the leader is this man, Wayne Gardner, one of the few bikes yet not to take a pit stop. In second position is another bike yet not to take a pit stop, the Neil Shivers Robert Holden Suzuki 750 up into second position. Then comes the bike that led the race earlier until it's pit stop, the Richard Scott Michael Dowson Yamaha RZ500. In fourth position, the Kawasaki GTZ 900 of Len Willing and Jeff French. Jeff French now at the helm, followed by the Rob Pillars, Ian Caro bike, Caro at, uh, at the helm. And then in sixth position, the Honda VF1000R of Pete Byers and Alan Blanco. Alan Blanco riding. Michael Dowson on the Yamaha 500 that really has taken the first hour and a half of the Castrol six hour in the limelight thanks you've really stormed into a tremendous lead in the race at that stage at the moment we're full of confidence yep. which is a big thing um just being out there rotating with the bigger bike riders pulling up and seeing what difficult they're having with their big bike um it's making us feel very good 
race leader, Wayne Gardner in the pits, off the bike. John Pace getting ready to go on the machine, there he goes, changing a wheel. They've got to the one hour 30 mark, they will do the race in three stops, assuming that there is no problem. And is that a problem because 22 seconds have gone by? No, they're just getting the last bit of gas into it. Bike starts and it's away in 27.82 seconds, that's the fastest of the pit stop so far for the lead competitors and John Pace storms out into the race. And into the lead goes one of the, the least likely bikes considered in uh, pre-race uh, reckoning and that is the Suzuki 750 Robert Holden bike number 11. It wasn't even rated very highly against the 750 Hondas although it is a more powerful bike but it now leads the 15th Castrol 6R. Well, Wayne Gardner has uh, shown us before how well he can ride, but certainly towards the end of your stint out there, Wayne, it was getting a little bit difficult at the back of the bike. Yes, um, as the time goes on, I think oh, we did over an hour and a half, I think, on a tank full, which is which is very good, you know. So we're trying to, we haven't got really the pace of the Kawasaki or the Yamaha because it's such a heavy bike, and um, we're going for, for length for length in each, each um, stint, so... We did a fair while, but towards the end, the tyre started letting go and slipping, and then a few corners, I was sort of a big full, uh, big full lot grips and big slides everywhere, but I was hanging in there, and I was riding still, you know, quite safely, so it's going real well at the moment, yeah, I'm quite All right, well, we've just seen uh, the former race leader come into the pit, so we're not sure what's happening here over on race four, uh, bike four, that's the Len Willing Jeff French machine. You've been out following them around, Wayne. How's they been looking out on the track? Well, they're very, very quick. I mean, like I was explaining just then, the Kawasaki's are good for sprinting, and uh, they're a little bit quicker than the Honda and a bit more agile and easier to ride, and the corner's not easy to ride up. But I don't know what's happened here. I think they might have had a bit of a breakdown. I, I hope for us, our sake anyway, because uh, we're sort of struggling at the moment. But we're getting there. Well, we're seeing a little bit of fuel spewing spew, uh, down onto the ground there. What's that? I don't, know. I don't think it's fuel or water. It's hard to say. I don't really know, they might have had a fuel blockage or it could be anything, but um, they're away again, so they'll be back in again, chasing we're us. We've seen time. a couple of times today machines having problems with with pre-frozen fuel, causing blockage in the fuel line. Well, we had a, we had frozen fuel for the start, we had no problems. The only problem I had was it was as it warmed up and the fuel uh, melted, it started gaining volume again and started coming out the fuel cap and all up my leathers and on my visor and that. But eventually I started using it and using it and now it's okay towards the end. And I went on to reserve about five laps from the end. I just put on reserve then and we pulled in. We probably had about another litre left, I'd say. And so we're quite, we're, ste we're just steady plodding, plodding along, you know, which is great. One of the most outstanding features down here in the pits is that what we've seen in the tyre and fuel changes. It's taking less time to change a tyre today than what it is to refuel the bike. Yeah, well, that's just... Each year everything gets better and better and better and each new model bike comes out the wheels get easier to change on them and um, as you can see they're doing it faster than the fuel because the fuel tanks are getting bigger each model as they come along. Well they're 24, 26 litre tanks now so plus you've only got a certain size tap to get the fuel in so you can only get so much fuel in at so much time so they're getting the tyre turns quicker than the fuel so that's, that's great really. 3.8 seconds. Through the back of this, Malcolm, Malcolm Campbell down on bike number one. He was in ninth place. He was running second in the 750 class. He, of course, won it last year. Was fastest or equal fastest qualifier for three years. And what an unhappy six hour it's been since really choosing the wrong bike. Then again, he had troubles at Amaru Park. He couldn't really the thousand Hondas worth a, a goer there at all by calculation. Mal hurt his arm for sure. Campbell has been down six times since his crash in the Malaysian Grand Prix Make in May. Seven. seven now. No, it's not Campbell. Campbell's on the back of the bike. That's, that's Chris Oldfield. So Campbell's just left on the back of the bike and it's Chris Oldfield has hurt himself. So they come to the pits. John Bennett, the Team Honda mechanic, rushes in to have a look at the machine. But Ollie Oldfield has certainly got a problem with his arm. There again is bike four. That's the Len Willing Jeff French bike, which was leading earlier. In its pit stop, we saw it spitting some steam. And listen now to it. That's certainly a boiling bike. The 
ambient temperature at Orland Park today is under 30 degrees, but the track temperature is well over 40 degrees. We put a pyrometer on the track a little while ago, and we've got 42.5 degrees track temperature. Now, coming up inside these fairings, these bikes are really getting hot, and that could well be the story of the then willing Jeff French bike. Remember that Jeff French dropped the race bike yesterday afternoon, and the engine from the race bike was transposed last night to the chassis, so the bike is not in good condition anyway. And it looks like the race is over in terms of outright contention is this man, Richard Scott, from Bike 7, the Yamaha RZ500. He leads by just four and a half seconds from Wayne Gardner, John Pace. Two laps down, three laps down rather, is the Neil Shivers, Robert Holden, Suzuki 750. In fourth position, another lap behind, comes the Byers Blanco Honda VF1000. One lap behind them again, the Thompson Sattler Kawasaki. And one lap behind them again, the Cox Scotia Honda VF1000F, which had so much difficulty earlier in the event, but which now is coming back into major contention. The riders, incidentally, are lapping at 1 minutes 22.2 seconds average for the first four hours of the race, an average speed of 113 kilometres an hour, including pit stops. On the other hand, pace from behind, assessing the situation all the time much more easily than Scott, who's under enormous pressure. Second. It's four laps back then to third place, number 11, the Suzuki 750 of Neil Chivers, and that's the scene in the pit area. Look at them. They're riding harder than the riders. Third place, Robert Holden, Neil Chivers on the Suzuki 750, number 11. Fourth place, Vantage Racing's Byers and Blanco on number five. Fifth place, Bennett Honda's Rod Cox and Robert Scolia on two. And sixth, number 16, Max Thompson, Paul Sattler, Harry Motorcycles, GPZ 900, Kawasaki. 1.17 seconds the gap, first to second position. power of the big Honda down the straight should make up that slightly as Scott now moves into that left-hander and has everything hanging out. And the leaderboard of the Castrol 6 hour after 250 laps. You know the story at Scott and Dowson by just the bike length from Gardner and Pace. Shivers and Holden in third position, several laps down. Then in fourth position, comes the Honda VF1000 of Byers and Blanco, followed by Cox Scotty on the 1000F, and then Max Thompson and Sattler on the Kawasaki GPZ.